We're going to start looking at section 7.4 today, dealing with properties of logarithms. There are three properties that are going to allow us to do what we call expanding and condensing logs. Okay? This was extremely helpful back when I was in school, back in the dark ages, when we didn't have graphing calculators. We didn't have any kind of calculator that would do logs for us. So in the back of our math books, we had log tables. So when we had to solve log equations or, or expand or condense, we had to look at the back and find those decimal equivalents. Okay? You guys have it easy. So you just have three properties you have to learn. The first property is called the product property. It basically is saying if you are taking the log of a product, in this case m times n, you can pull it apart or expand it and take the log of each of those factors separately. So we can take the log of m and we can take the log of n separately and then add those answers together. So back in my day at school, right, I would have looked up what is the log of m from my table, what is the log of n from the table, and then I'd add them together. The second property is the quotient property. It says if we are dividing, we have a quotient, m divided by n, we're trying to take the log of that whole thing, we can pull it apart, take the log of m and the log of n separately, and then subtract those answers. Okay, now, easiest way I have for helping you to remember this, multiplication and plus, right? If you take your x and turn it a little bit, it turns into a plus sign, yes? So multiplication is going to expand into addition. For the second one, your division bar and your subtraction look the same, yes? Those go together. So division turns into subtraction. The third property says if we are taking the log of something that is being raised to a power, we can take the log of m and then just multiply it to the power. I'm going to refer to that as bringing the power out front. So this power is going to move out front and get multiplied to the log of m. Okay? Those are the three properties that we're going to use to expand and condense expressions. It does. It works both directions. So if we have it written like it is here, we can expand it this way. If we're going to condense, we're going from this kind of thing back to that. Okay? The two sides are equal. So we can go back and forth. So the first one here says, what is each expression written as a single log? That means we're condensing it. All right, we want it down to just one log word. In these expressions, you see the log written out for each little piece. We want to condense it back so there's just one. So another way of seeing this, it might just say condense, okay, instead of write it as a single log. Now, one thing to notice, your bases have to be the same. And for our examples, they always will be, okay, don't worry about that part, but to do this project, the, to use these properties to expand and condense, you have to have the same kind of base. All right. So subtraction condenses back into what? Division. So I'm going to put this down as log base 4 of 32 divided by 2. So that's like the M and the N in my property. Okay? Well, what is 32 divided by 2? So this becomes the log base 4 of 16, but we know what that is. We did these last week. We said if I said log base 4 of 16 equals something, think about doing your little circle. 4 to what power gets me 16? So the log base 4 of 16 is just 2. It's the power we'd have to raise our base to to turn it into that 16. So this whole thing just becomes a 2. Okay. Now, sometimes you're going to get lucky and be able to condense it all the way down to just a number. Most of the time you won't. You'll still have that log term in there. Okay. Let's look at our next one. I see numbers in front. Where do they come from? 
What moves out front? The powers. So we're going to put them back as powers. Okay? This 6 is going to go back as a power of x, and this 5 is going to go back as a power of y. So I'm going to take a middle step here. This becomes log base 2 of x to the 6th plus log base 2 of y to the 5th. Okay, so I've dealt with the powers. Now I can deal with the addition sign. Addition is going to turn back into multiplication. So I'm going to condense this down. I'm going to have a single log in front, right, log base 2. And now I'm going to have a product, x to the 6th times y to the 5th. All right, how about this next one? I see addition. Addition condenses back into multiplication. So this becomes the log base 4 of 5x times 3x, which becomes what? 15x squared. All right, I'm going to pause the recording. I want you guys at your tables to try the next one. What is the first thing that you did? Yeah, bring the power back in. All right, if you have powers, you always want to put them back first. The 2 is just the power of 6. It has nothing to do with this 9. Okay, so now we have log base 4 of 6 squared minus log base 4 of 9. Subtraction is going to condense back into division. This becomes the log base 4 of 6 squared divided by 9. What is 6 squared? 36. What's 36 divided by 9? So this becomes the log base 4 of 4, which is 1. Okay. Questions at all on condensing? All right. Now we're going to do the reverse. We're going to expand. In our next example, we are taking the log. Notice there's no little base. What is it when you don't see a base? It's base 10. It's called a common log. Okay. So we're doing the common log of 4x divided by y. The 4 is getting multiplied to the x, and we're dividing by a y. That means we have both the product and the quotient rule applying here. Okay, I'm going to first of all split apart the division. So this is going to become the common log of 4x minus the common log of y. Okay, division turns into subtraction when you pull it apart. Now, the 4 and x is a product. We can pull that apart. Products turn into what? Addition. Multiplication turns into addition. So we're adding the log base 4, sorry, log base 10 of x minus log base 10 of y. All right? That's as expanded as I can make it. Notice that when you expand it, you have that log term in front of each piece. Whereas with condensing, we pulled all those out and made it just a single log. Okay? All right, our next one. Which of the properties do you see being used here? The division one, the quotient property. What else? And the power one. Okay, so I'm going to pull apart the division, make this log base 9 of 729, sorry, of x to the fourth, minus log base 9 of 729. And then the x to the fourth, what are we going to do? Yes, bring the 4 out front. All right, powers move to the front. So this becomes 4 times the log base 9 of x minus log base 9 of 729. Now, can we simplify log base 9 of 729? In other words, if we did our little circle thing, 
Is 9 to a power get us 729? If you're not sure, look at your power charts. 7, sorry, 9 to some power gets us 729. What's that power? 3. So this whole log base 9 of 729 is just a 3. So my simplified version here would be 4 log base 9 of x minus 3. All right. The next one. We have log base 3 of 250 divided by 37. Division is going to get pulled apart. This becomes log base 3 of 250 minus log base 3 of 37. Okay? When I look at that and I'm trying to think if I do my circle, is there a 3 to some power that's going to get me 37? That's a nice integer number. No. Is there 3 to some power that's going to get me 250? No. But 250 is kind of a big number, and if we can pull it apart, we want to break this down as far as we can. Okay? There is a power somewhere in 250. Do you see it? 125 is one of our perfect cubes, right? So could I rewrite this as log base 3 of 125 times 2? Okay. Now, the 125 times 2, that's a product. I'm going to pull it apart. So we end up with log base 3 of 125 plus log base 3 of 2 minus log base 3 of 37. Okay. Again, we're trying to expand this as far as we can go. Now, 125 we said was 5 cubed. And that power can get moved to the front. Okay, so there was a power in there. It was just hidden. So this is going to become 3 times the log base 3 of 5 plus the log base 3 of 2 minus the log base 3 of 37. 37 is a prime number. There's nothing that's going to be able, there's no factors that I can pull that apart like the 250 had. All right, I'm going to pause the recording. I want you guys to try the next one. All right, so notice that the 5 is just a power for x. It is not a power of 9. So we have to pull this apart first before we move that power anywhere. So I'm going to split it between here, log base 3 of 9 plus log base 3 of x to the 5th. Then I can move the power in front of the x piece. I'm going to have 5 log base 3 of x. Okay. What do I get here? 9 is a power of 3, right? It's what power? A 2, square. So that's my simplified answer. Okay. Now, I saw a few people change log base 3 of 9 into log base 3 of 3 squared and they move that in front, which is fine. You can do it that way. But you still have to simplify what's the log base 3 of 3. It's just a 1. So this still would simplify down to just being a 2. Does that make sense? So if you want to take that extra step, you can, but it's not needed. Questions on any of the expanding ones? OK. The last piece that we're going to look at, um, we have one more formula for you. It's called a change of base formula. So when I asked you to do, what was the one we just did? Log base 3 of 9, you were able to tell me that was just a 2, yes? But if I said, what is log base 3 of 37, you don't know what that is. 
right? That's going to be a decimal number. So we have some ways that we can figure out what that is without having to go back to my old math book and look it up in the back, okay? Look at your graphing calculator. There are two keys that involve logs. One is just LOG, should be on the left-hand side, across from next to the 7. Okay, that is common log, okay? That means we are using base 10 when we use that key. So if I hit log 37, that means log base 10 of 37, right? But I was asked to find log base 3 of 37. That's different. I have to convert or change the base. The property here says, if I'm taking log base B of a number M, I can pull that apart. I can take the log of M, and I can take the log of B, and then divide those answers. Okay? Now, notice the little C base. What that means is we can convert it to some common base. Now, common base of 10 is easy because we have keys on our calculator that will do that for us. But there are some examples out there where we can do this without a calculator by choosing a better base than what we were given. So I'm going to show you both of those. In our first example, we have log base 81 of 27. If I just go with base 10, I can rewrite this saying, I'm going to take the common log of 27 and divide it by the common log of 81. So I'm converting it and using a base 10. Go ahead and grab your calculators. When you hit your log key, typically a parenthesis shows up. So you have to be very careful that you close it off after the 27 before you divide by the second log. Okay? What do we end up with? 0.75. Okay? Now, I could have done that without a calculator. Because if I look at the two numbers involved, 27 and 81, those are both powers of what common base? 3. Right? I could rewrite those both as powers of 3. So I could have done this. I could have said, I'm going to use log base 3 of 27 and divide it by log base 3 of 81. And I know log base 3 of 27 is... Three, right? Three to the third power gets me 27. What power of three gets me 81? Four. And is three fourths the same as 0.75? So I can use either option. If I don't have a calculator, I can try to find that common base to use. If I do have a calculator, I can use base 10. To help you remember which one goes on top and which one goes in the bottom, your B here is your base, right? Your base goes in the basement, okay? So that lower number, that subscript, is going to be in the denominator of your quotient. All right. How about for this next one? Log base 5 of 36. Can you picture a common base? Something I can say, this base to a power gets me 5, and the same base to a power gets me 36. No. This is one where I can't find a better base than 10. So I'm going to just go ahead and use my calculator. Which one's going to go in the numerator? 36 divided by log of 5, common log. Again, make sure you close off the parentheses around that 36 before you hit the divide key. Typically, logs are given out to four decimal places. It just made it looking up in the back of our book in that table more fun, right? When we had more decimals to worry about. So what is this out to four decimal places? 2.2266. Okay. For the next two, I want you to talk at your tables. Can either of these be done without needing to use our calculator? I'm going to give you a minute to try them. 
For the first one, can we convert them to a common base other than 10? Yeah. Yes. What base would we use? Two. two. So we'd have log base 2 of 32 divided by log base 2 of 8. Yeah. 2 to what power gets me 32? 5. 2 to what power gets me 8? So 5 thirds would be my exact answer. Yes? Out to four decimals, we would write it as what? Okay. For the second one, can I use a base other than 10? No. So I'm going to have to use common log of 18 divided by the common log of 4. What's your decimal for that one? 2.08. Five zero it rounds up? Yeah. Last hour told me four nine. Well, Should nine it does it round up? Two, okay. Yeah. All right. Our last question shows you where logs are sometimes used. We'll have some more examples as we continue in this chapter. But for today, it says the pH of a substance equals negative log of H plus, where that H plus is the concentration of hydrogen ions. The concentration for ammonia is 10 to the negative 11. And the concentration for vinegar is 6.3 times 10 to the negative 3. What is the difference of the pH levels of ammonia and vinegar? OK, so we're going to start out. We want pH of ammonia minus the pH of vinegar. OK, we're looking for the difference between those. But we said pH can be written as a log. So this would be the log of H plus for ammonia with a negative in front. Yes? Negative log minus negative log of the concentration for vinegar. OK, let's substitute in what we know. The concentration for ammonia was what? 10 to the negative 11 minus a negative becomes plus. And the concentration for vinegar was 6.3 times 10 to the negative 3. That is a product. I can pull that apart. That's 6.3 times 10 to the negative 3. I'm going to rewrite it as the log of 6.3 plus the log of 10 to the negative 3. OK, I'm just expanding that out. Now, I do want you to be careful. In this case, we had minusing a negative, which turned into addition. So we didn't have to really worry about it. But let's say this minus hadn't been there, and this was still a negative sign that negative would get distributed to both parts when you expand it. Does that make sense? So it would have been minus log of 6.3 minus log of 10 to the negative 3 if it hadn't been converted. Yes? Watch for that. OK. So going back now, what base are we using? Base 10. So in this first one, log base 10 of 10 to the negative 11. What would that be? Think about it. Log base 10 of 10 to a power. Log base 10 of 10 to a power is just going to be the power. Because we're saying 10 to something gets us that. Well, 10 to what power gets me 10 to the x? It would have to just be an x. Yes? So when I say common log of 10 to a power, my answer is just the power. Now, this has a negative in front. So it's negative, negative 11. So it becomes positive 11. I don't know the log of 6.3. So I'm going to leave that for a second. What do I get for the log of 10 to the negative 3? I just get a negative 3. Well, you can. You can move the power in front. What did we have? Um, log of 10 to the negative 11. You can picture moving this out. But 
but what is the log, the common log of 10? It's just a 1. Right? 10 to the first power gets me 10. So this becomes just a 1 times negative 11 is negative 11. So you're taking more steps than you need to. Okay? If you are taking the log base b of b to a power, your answer is just the power. If these two bases are the same number, your answer is just the power. Okay, let's go finish this one up. Grab your calculators. What is the common log of 6.3? okay? 11 minus 3 gets me 8. So I'm adding 8 and 0.7. 993. All right. I am going to give you your first assignment. This is what you are going to work on tonight. I'm also going to show you in a second the day two assignment. That's what you will be working on tomorrow after we do our formative quiz. I'm going to have you write them both down today, though. All right, so again, this is the assignment that's due tomorrow, and then tomorrow you will be working on this one.